So the basic definition of a factorial is a, the factorial of a number um, denoted by n followed by exclamation point is the product of all positive integers less than or equal to n. So zero factorial is one, and although it might seem as though zero factorial should be zero because there's nothing less than zero, so why would it be one? Um, it, it is, and it's just because it's a simple rule. There's no mathematical explanation for it besides the fact that any calculation involving a factorial works when it's equal to one. So it's kind of a standard rule that you have to go by. Um, so examples of factorials, five factorial equals five times four times three times two times one, although the one is pretty much irrelevant, and 10 works the same way. Um, and they get really big really easily. So 200 factorial is approximately 7.89 times 10 to the 374. So how to do this on your calculator for bigger numbers. So you would type in the number and then go to the math button and then go over to PRB, which is on the far right. And then you go down to number four if you just want to do a simple factorial, press enter and then enter again, you get the answer. However, if you want to do permutations or combinations, you could go to number two or number three for those, P being permutation, C being combination. So what are permutations and combinations? So um, factorials have a lot of common day applications that they're used for, um, often including permutations and combinations. So these are ways to like organize on a certain amount of things. So combinations are kind of used for groupings and permutations are used for lists because combinations, order doesn't matter. So you're finding how many ways you can group a certain amount of objects out of a larger number. And permutations, you're finding however many ways you can group it and organize it within those groups. That, like for example, one, two, three is different than three, two, one. Okay, so something that's very complicated, not really, is how to do a half factorial. So whole numbers like four factorial would be four times three times two times one. However, if you have a number like 1.5 or 2.5, how would you do that? So a simple rule is that like one half factorial, because you can't minus one after that, so and then it would go into negative numbers. So a simple rule that 0.5 factorial is equal to 0.5 times the square root of pi. So if you have 1.5, you would minus 1, and then it would be 0.5. So it would be 1.5 times 0.5 times the square root of pi, and that would be equal to the 1.5 factorial. Similarly, with 2.5, it's 2.5 times 1.5 times 0.5 square root of pi. Works with all half numbers. So the Brendan problem is a problem that we had in class. Um, it usually states, um, what is the maximum, what is the minimum number of people in a room to make the probability greater than 50% that at least two people share a birthday. So if my birthday is one of 365 days and a second person is, there's the 364 out of 365 chance that you will not share my birthday because there are 365 days in a year. Um, for a third person, it would be 363 out of 365 and it would continue like that. So multiplying each of the probabilities together, the problem is basically asking, what is the end value so that each value preceding 365 minus n over 365 multiplied it, multiplied by it, is less than one half. Um, so when worked out algebraically, you're basically looking for 365 factorial over 365 to the n, since you multiply each of the probabilities, um, times 365 minus n factorial um, is less than 0.5 because we've worked so that it's um, you, the probability that someone won't share your birthday. So, so the power ball. Can I stop you for one second? Mm -hmm. I, I'm stopping the clock here. Can you just run the board? Can you back up to the last slide and just give and us an example? Pick a number like 10 or 20 or 30 and just write what that would look like with that specific number. Because that okay. formula, I get it because we had talked about it, but other people may not see what that is. Right, so I can try it with five. So you have 365 factorial over 365 to the fifth times 365 minus five, which is 360 factorial. So then what you're left with is, this is equal to 365 
times 364 times 363 times 360 factorial. So these two will cancel out until you're left with this value over 365 to the fifth. And that would be the probability that um, the people in the room won't share birthday. Good. Okay, good, thank you. Okay, so the Powerball. So I don't know if everybody knows what the Powerball is. Basically, um, you can win a lot of money if you pick a certain, if you pick six numbers that are correct. And recently there was one for 600, yeah, six hundred million dollars, and someone won it. But basically, what is your probability of winning this? So there are fifty-nine white balls and thirty-five red balls. Each of them have a number from one to fifty-nine or one to thirty-five, and you choose five numbers from the white balls and one from the red. And so your chances of choosing a correct white are one over fifty-nine choose five, and the chances of choosing a correct red are one over thirty-five. So to figure out what your probability is, you would do one over 35 times one over 59 choose five. So this number ends up being one over 175,223,510. So you have a very, very small probability of winning. So how can you improve your chances? You can, but if you choose the same, the same numbers as somebody else and you both win a certain amount of money, you have to split that. So how can you decrease your chances of doing that? If you pick different or uncommon numbers, then you don't have to share the money that you win. Do we have time? Yep. Okay, so recently, um, a bunch of people picked the same six numbers. 22, 28, 32, 33, 39, and 40. And they all won a certain amount of money, but they had to split it a whole bunch of ways. And so the Powerball actually thought that these people all cheated because how could this many people get so much money and they all picked the same number? So they thought that they like cheated somehow. And what ended up happening, well actually I'm gonna ask, is there, so how do you think maybe they could have chosen these numbers? I overheard so. Does anyone have an idea? Last date the Phillies won. Is it a mathematical thing, or are we just like throwing out like what? No, no, it's like. Okay. What do you think? I know. Should I say? Sure. Oh. Go ahead. Oh, what do you think? Is it that they all chose the same number because they thought it would increase their chance of winning? No, no they didn't know each other. Oh. Yeah, they were all random people. Yeah. Yep. It was the lucky numbers on the back of fortune cookies. Yeah. Right. So it was like one company distributes fortune cookies, and the lucky numbers were, you know, repetitive. All the same. Mm -hmm. Fortune cookies. People figure, hey, why not? These are my lucky numbers. Let's enter them. Um, coincidentally, lots of people had these lucky numbers, and lots of people won the money. But they, but they had to split it, so they didn't actually so end up winning a ton of money. They still got one, okay. but not like yeah. thousands and seconds. Yeah. Okay. Ten seconds. Thank you. Questions? Yes. Sophie? Um, with the Powerball thing, what does choose five mean? <coughs> okay, so you choose five numbers out of, like, from one to pick five. It's a combination. Okay. Um, can you do factorials with something other than 0.5? Yes, there is a way to do decimal factorials. Um, however, it, it includes something called the gamma function which I looked up and is very complex and beyond my teenage years. So um, <laughs> yes, it exists, it does exist. It's, but it's very complicated and it's one. not, yeah, it's not simple at all. And there are, if you try to get a negative factorial, you can't because it's gonna theoretically just be negative infinity because if you keep going down, then you're gonna keep getting more. So yeah. Yes. Um, you said that you can minimize your chances of winning with someone else by choosing a number that's not popular. Is there anything that defines a number as being popular? Nope. <laughs> well, for example, like 7 and 33, as Matt stated, are like common numbers. Um, 7 and 33 happen to be, you know, popular numbers. If you pick more obscure numbers, if you don't pick your fortune cookie numbers, that would be a way to decrease your chances of having to show the money. There are kind of little quirks like that, but I don't, there's no rules. Yeah, there's no mathematical yeah. system to figure out what's an uncommon number. Yeah. Any more questions? Yeah, I have a question. Um, 
when you were describing half factorials, mm -hmm. which I have never heard before, mm -hmm. you said you take the number and you multiply it by the square root of pi? Yeah. Right? Um, yeah. Well, you Where it works the same way. So it's like a number multiplied by that number minus 1 multiplied by that number minus 1. But once you get down to 0. 0.5, you can't 0. 0.5 factorial. Right. 0. 0.5 factorial is equal to half the square root of pi. Which is just a rule. That's just oh, so that's another like definition. Yeah, yeah just like so zero factorial. So to get anything, okay. you multiply so by everything minus one. Three point five factorial. Yeah. Would that be so three point five? So two point five. So oh, it times would be one point five. Three point five times yeah. two point five times one point five times point five square root of five. Wow, I had no idea. I'd never seen that. Do you have any idea what that would be useful for, or when you could possibly employ that? I don't. If I don't you have like it. one and a half of something that you're trying to find the probability for, maybe. Yeah, maybe. But I that's kind of an possible. obscure way to think about it. But I mean, yeah. I guess it's all is. You have to have yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, maybe. It could be that that's what it is. I never, I don't know. Any other questions? OK, thank you, girls. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm gonna pick the next group and then I'm gonna finish writing out my little sheet as well. Next group is um, uh, uh, okay. nope. these are the people that are here or I'm writing the same number again. You keep rolling one. Okay. And that's Catherine. That little duck. That little I rolled the one earlier too. Catherine, can you tell me who else? And what's your topic? Okay. 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 So, girls, give me a uh, give me a few minutes here. I'll be right with you. Just to finish up. Okay. How many presentations?